Spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. Super brief off topic. Some more news videos are always incredibly funny and, and informative, but their most recent episode, Infrastructure Week, W-E-A-K, not W-E-E-K, is some of their best work, so be sure to check it out. Now back to the episode. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, especially episodes, as videos made by new rock star, screen rant, nerdist, CBR, screen crush, black nerd, comedy, IGN, heavy spoilers, magic, magic, Maggie. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watched, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2, and I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows, and yeah, that definitely includes this episode, this is, this is one of my favorites. And yeah, this is another, you know, so so far this this show, it's it's five for five, every single episode has good to great pacing. You know, there are no slow pacing killing segments of any of these episodes. And the episode title this time is What If Zombies? And I, I say zombies like that because it doesn't just say zombies. It says zombies exclamation point question mark. I like that a lot. I, I hope they I hope they do more stuff like that in in like upcoming ones because you know if you look back all the others I think all of the others I guess they end, they probably end in a question mark I could imagine it it I haven't checked but they definitely don't have both an exclamation point and a question mark anyway the episode is 28 minutes not counting end credits and we immediately we see we're at the start of Infinity War with Banner and the Sanctum Sanctorum there to warn about Thanos. And I like that, like you see, it, it looks like the Sanctum is completely empty. The only thing stirring we see is the ah, Cloak of Levitation. I forget what it, it's been a while since I watched Doctor Strange. I think they call it the Cloak of Levitation. You know, Lewis for short. Now... Yeah, and, and, you know, Bruce opens the door to the outside. It does really look like a zombie apocalypse has happened. You know, people around, gloomy lighting. Like, it's like early more like, like, what what is it? Not dusk. Yeah, it's, it's like early morning, and, you know, you can choose to light that as, like, this bright, you know, but, no, it's it's gloomy. And and I get, like, you know, when, when you see the scene, when, when the scene in Infinity War, it's not gloomy. It's, it's, yeah, it looks like a nice day when you, it, at least when, when, like, when Tony and Pepper are talking, and that is this exact same, or, or right around this exact same time, you know. What do you mean, no? Well, the audience thinks it's because he's afraid, but the filmmakers say it's because he's, he's tired of being used as a weapon, which I've never heard anyone except the filmmakers, like, say, oh yeah that, yeah, that makes sense. I, everyone seems to think it's because he's afraid. I, if I didn't know that the filmmaker said that, I would also, my, my first guess was, oh, he's, he's afraid. And that's like, you know, he, he just got his ass kicked by Thanos. That's, he is not used to losing. Anyway, and we see several Avengers kill the, fan, the children of Thanos. Yay! But then they start eating them. Ew. And that was a great, like, Bruce is there, oh, you are, what was it, you are, you you're in trouble now or something you know it's it's in in the in infinity war he says it when thor arrives in in wakanda but you know he's like yeah and, oh uh, i feel like that's going a little far when when they start fighting and the, yeah so spider-man far from home teased tony stark as a zombie now we got him and i am so happy this is this is so good holy crap zombie wong's head got chopped off by a portal they really can get away with ridiculously gory things as long as they're not happening to human characters. You know, this episode and Shang-Chi, both incredibly gory for PG-13. Like, yeah. And Wasp used ants to eat the zombies. I cannot believe I didn't see this coming. It is probably one of the most obvious uses of ants as a tool or weapon. You know, that is, yeah. 
you know, I, I, we don't know exactly how many, but in, in like, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're tiny, I would say hundreds, maybe thousands. Yeah, they probably could eat through, you know, yeah. Which also tells us that when we see, like, I don't know if, I mean, I can imagine Scott, it, it, I'm not sure it would really occur to him to do something that messed up, but, like, Hope, she was holding back, you know, when she's, like, fighting in Ant-Man and the Wasp, she's like, you know what, I think I'm gonna hold off on that, I don't, I don't need my army of man-eating ants in this particular situation, I'll, I'll zap them with the thing, did we ever find out, have, have we, has it been confirmed whether Hope's zappy thing is, like, lethal or just like stun like makes you really sleepy or or what is anyway and we find out janet van dyne is patient zero a quantum virus because you know i think at this point we have to scott nailed it you guys just put quantum in front of everything i know he phrased it as a question oof that happened so there are times where the watcher is just one of the viewers Am I a terrible person that the moment I saw Paul Rudd be bitten by a zombie, my first thought was, is this going to be the thing that actually means this man finally starts looking his age? You know, the ravages of time do nothing to his look, so I have to wonder if the zombie virus, you know, at, at this point in, in watching the episode, I wondered if the zombie virus would, but, you know, it turns out later in the episode, they managed to save his head in a Futurama-style jar. And Peter's video quickly gets us up to date on who is still human and fighting the zombies. It communicates the rules and confirms that Peter is a fan of Zombieland. <laughs> I guess depending on whether or not you like the, you know, Zombieland 2 is either a good thing or a bad thing. That, you know, going by the end of this episode, he did not live to see the second movie. You know, if Tony hadn't died at the start of this, then when the snap happened, Peter might have been like, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. I don't know if it's the snap or the fact that you are eating my arm. And it confirms that the zombie virus works a lot like how it works in zombie movies. Did I go a little too loud? I'll, I'll, I usually have pretty good control over that. I feel like I might have gone a little loud there. Let's see. As if things weren't bad enough, now we have to go to Jersey. And Okoye says Wakanda doesn't need horror movies. They have American reality TV shows. Just, I... I really hope we get more Okoye. I've been really, really happy to see... Yeah. I mean, there's this episode. There's Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Is there any... MCU property that wouldn't be made better by the presence of at least some Dora Milaje? I don't think so. Spider-Man is your man, whether you're trying to stop a train or start it. We meet more zombie Avengers. That's M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T, the latter of which is what Vision is doing for Wanda. I should be sad, but I'm not, because at this point they haven't gone through the, the bonding experiences of Captain America and the Winter Soldier. And some music from Ant Man and the Wasp plays when Hope flies around zapping zombies. And they're doing a good job of using zombie fiction tropes, but it's still being the MCU, like they have to get to a specific place for the hope of a cure, which then turns out to have been like it's 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 a trap. You know, and they have to deal with something for transportation that is in a bad state, you know, oh, yeah. But they still have the the jokes and, and like, MCU characters behaving like, very much like MCU characters. Bucky versus Zombie Rogers is awesome, and, you know, others have already pointed out in the comics you know, Zombie Steve Rogers is also killed with his own shield, but it's Magneto that, like, uses his, you know, yeah, the, the you know, he moves metal to, to use it to, like, chop, 
uh, yeah. Sorry, pal. I guess this is the end of the line because in Captain America's Wonder Soldier, both of them said, I'm with you till the end of the line. And he just fell off a train. So, you know, end of the line. Yeah. Just, just brief. If you haven't watched the horror movie End of the Line from like, ah, crap, two thousand seven, I want to say, it's it's pretty good. It's it's not the best thing ever made, but it's it's good. It's worth watching. Guys, I'm covered in Sharon. Dude, at least you don't have any arst on you. I'm pretty sure this was the first time the MC, the MCU Spider Man directly mentioned Uncle Ben. So that was, yeah. The one where he fights zombies. With great power comes great ability to slay zombies. We are at least closer than we were. It's not exactly Google Maps, is he? Excellent sequence as Hope walks through the zombie horde in giant mode as she carries the team to the camp. Very emotional with the music. You know, she's stepping on zombies, which about 20 or 30 percent of them are like, I know I said I wanted this, but not like this. Hey, Peter, smile for me. Okay. Is he smiling? You guys, I think he's smiling. And we see there's a hole in the fence, but they don't walk closer yet. And we're told, you know, it's it's like the the Mind Stone affects, you know, so so they, they have enough of their brain left that they can use their powers and the mind stone has yeah holds them at bay. Would you guys stop jump scaring each other? I do like that Peter recognizes it as that. And we behold vision. It's good to see that guy again. And Scott is still around. That guy knows how to get out ahead. The technology is currently beyond human capabilities, not in Wakanda. Badass. And we meet Wanda and T'Challa, and yeah. And, you know, others have pointed out it's the, you know, having T'Challa say, in my culture, death is not the end, in an episode that airs after he died is very, like, yeah, it's a, it's a, Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's kind of messed up. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if they should have removed it. I guess you could say that it's, it's sweet that, yeah, I'll leave it at that. And Vision has been feeding Wanda, which is also something we've seen in other zombie stories. Very nicely done. And it is like, it's a good kind of, you know, if Infinity War doesn't happen the way that it's, yeah, in in the universe we see in this episode, Infinity War doesn't go the same way, so we don't, you know, we don't get WandaVision. Instead, we get Wanda turn into a zombie and Vision feeding her human, yeah. You have awakened her. She hasn't eaten in days. Baba Yaga, for once, he's very close to being right about that. Good foreshadowing of it, too. Because the first time he says it is before we see Zombie Wanda. And Lewis is flying Scott's head around, and he makes a Harry Potter flying spell joke. I, I, I'm not familiar with it. I, I know just, a, just enough about Harry Potter to know that that is definitely a, a reference to Harry Potter. I saw someone else say that it's, that, yeah, he says the, the, the words he says are what they say in the movies to fly, so, something like that. How many times is the MCU going to force us to watch the Mind Stone torn from Vision's forehead? Oh, yes. Oh, no, no, no. Nice expectation subversion. Because we do, you know, the MCU has a lot of victorious moments, and we think this is another victorious moment, but then it goes, yeah. Wanda fighting the Hulk. I mean, there are definitely fans that have been wanting to see that. And Hope almost stops the jet. Quanjet, Quinjet, Quadrajet, something, something jet. Go ahead, high five. It's okay. I won't feel left out. I really love Scott's dad jokes. 
I hope Disney makes like an app that you can download and if you need cheering up you can open the app, click a key and it'll have him tell a dad joke. Maybe they could even get Paul Rudd. And he, yeah, and, and when T'Challa says in my culture death is not the end, he also told Natasha that in Civil War. And zombie Thanos about to, you know, he's, yeah, but when I first saw it, I was like, oh, he's just about to do the snap. But actually, he, you know, someone else pointed out he's still missing, was it the soul stone? I, it, he's missing at least one of the stones. So, but yeah, it looks like Infinity War, you know, though playing out somewhat differently, it will end in very much the same way. So, yeah, very downer ending, which again fits the zombie story. I mean, I'm not sure I see any way for the Avengers to be able to reverse the snap with so many of them zombified or dead. And, ah, let's see, I was, there was a thing that I wanted to, right, right, I, one of the Easter egg people, I forget now, it might have been a joke, but one of the Easter egg people said, maybe this time Thanos really will snap to make twice as much food since he's going to need food as a zombie as well. I guess the if he does that, he you know, with so many zombies, eventually they're going to run out of food again. He's going to have to pass the gauntlet on to someone else. I, it, let's see, he can snap it twice without dying. But he might not be able to snap it a third time, or if he does, it might kill him. Or it's possible his zombie physiology is too weak that he won't survive a second snap. But yeah, they'll, they'll have to pass it around to a bunch of different, but yeah. I mean, in the in the comics, if I recall, they they like move they they travel to a different dimension. Actually, actually, in the comics, if I recall, the 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 virus didn't come from the quantum realm. It came from a another another universe in the multiverse or something like that. So this is similar to the second of the of, uh, episode of the show. In how much of a fun alternate story it is to what happened in the regular MCU universe. You, you know, episodes one, three, let's see, yeah, episodes one and three have like one major change, but some things playing out in a relatively similar way, and you know, episode four takes a single event from the MCU and puts a twist on it, you know, instead of his hands, it's Christine dying. And then goes off in a completely different story. You know, that story doesn't have very much of an e equal analog it's a parallel version in the MCU. But this one, it's Infinity War, only there are zombies. You know, you I mean, complete with, like, Tony Stark helping defeat you know Squidward so yeah so almost everyone from the movies returned for this the only characters where they use different actors are Peter Parker and Steve and I don't as hilarious as it would have been for them to bring back Chris Evans to do like snarling I, I you know yeah I don't, I don't blame them for not and and him for not you know doing that but yeah now, and yeah, you know, it's not quite Thomas Tom Holland's Peter Parker, but yeah, it's a it's a good Peter Parker, and he's the actor that plays him in this. I am afraid I did not note his name, but the actor who plays him in this has played has has done the voice for Peter Parker in other stuff. Like I think it was a video game the other, or was it a show? You know, it's on IMDb. And most of the cast in this gave solid performances. And again, it's getting better at not playing characters broad. I suppose an argument could be made that Scott was somewhat on the broad side, but it wasn't quite like, yeah, you know, if you if you think about like, let's see, if, let's see, the the yeah, the ones that especially bothered me were episode two's. Korath and the the 
thankfully very brief. Ah, uh, you know, I do not know his name, but he's recognizable as a member of the, you know, he's he's one of the enforcers of Hydra in Captain America the Winter Soldier, but he's not Crossbones. He's the other guy, you know. Very brief, but very broad. Like, you know, Natasha's like, can you hold these for me? And, you know, she's got the cuffs off, and he's like, sure. What? And it's just like, just because it's animated doesn't mean you have to have cartoon characters. And yeah, Korath, holy crap. Like, wow, that was broad. That was, that bothered me. Let's see. I don't know if I feel like it was a missed opportunity to not have Sharon do or say anything that hints at her being the power broker. I mean, maybe this was written by people who don't think that, yeah, that sh that Sharon should become the power broker. Maybe they're trying to rehabilitate her character. You know, I, yeah, may maybe, you know, I do like that they had the dark, tragic twist that this version of Steve Rogers, he wants to apply lips to part of her body, but he uses more teeth than she's comfortable with. That was a very dark joke. It's a very dark episode. For such an ensemble cast in a very short runtime, I think they did an incredible job of giving everyone something mean meaningful to do and or say. I wouldn't say that there's a single character in this that I wish they had just cut. You know, we have zombie versions of characters we know. Some of them Avenger, some of them not. That was really fun. I like that zombie happy still says blam while firing from the Iron Man tech glove, which someone pointed out that was the glove that Tony used in Civil War. You know, the one that just, like, covers part and just can... Yeah. It, it wasn't quite an entire gauntlet like we you know from from one of the regular suits but yeah i and and i like the detail that the zombie avengers can use their powers but their brains aren't quite as effective so they're not completely like hawkeye doesn't hit exactly the way he wants to for example It was great to see Wanda in a dark, um, alternate dark version here. Another dark episode of the show that is three in a row after, you know, yeah, after only two that weren't. Maybe all of them will be dark from now on. Some say that this is darker than last week's, but that one ended with the entire universe, you know, like, uh, uh, is destroyed the right term? The entire universe gone. Let's go with that. I feel like that's darker than this, but I'm I'm not complaining. And I guess it's it depends on like this one has more tragic character moments for more characters, where that one is like this overall major tragedy. You know, I mean, if Strange's entire universe is gone, Supreme Strange Supreme's entire universe is gone. That is probably more people dead than were killed in, in connection with zombies. But then again, it didn't look like they were in extreme pain as they were dying, which being eaten alive by a zombie would qualify as. So, yeah. I mean, how, seriously, how wild is it? We do actually see major char characters that we've been, like, super invested in in the MCU prior and in this episode. We see them turn to zombies like like during the episode i mean we we see some having already turned into zombies we see some that are killed by like sharon carter is killed by zombie steve rogers and they got away with it with like a pg-13 because it's you know it's it's happening I, I, yeah i guess it was like off screen or off in the dark or something you know so, so, yeah. And, right, so, in Shang-Chi, the movie ends with him fighting and defeating the Dweller in the Darkness. Others have already referred to that as a Lovecraftian horror. 
The Black Widow Solo movie was about a man systematically abusing teenage girls and young women, so the movies are also getting darker. I don't know for sure if they will keep this up, but I could imagine Eternals being dark. You know, in the trailers, we see that the, you know, we see what some theorize is the first nuclear explosion, and we see, I do not remember the names of the Eternals. I have not read very many. I'm, I'm not 100% certain I've read any Eternals comics, but the the inventor guy, Fast, Fastos, maybe? Anyway, I'll, I'll know the names by the end of the, the movie itself, maybe. Anyway, like, he's, he's, like, devastated emotionally, and some have theorized maybe he helped lead to the, like, he didn't think that they were going to use it to, to murder people, which is, you know, if you know your history, that is what the, yeah, um, yeah, the, 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 the two that America hit Japan with, that was murder. That was not military, you know, surgery, military surgical strikes or anything. But, but yeah, and certainly Spider-Man Far From Home, you know, if that actually is Strange Supreme, there's definitely going to be some darkness in it. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, there's, I would be very surprised if that movie is not dark. And although we only learn it late in Shang-Chi, both, you know, both in Shang-Chi and Black Widow, the both movies' titular characters have killed people on assassination missions. Now, I, I don't know, like, we don't get a lot of details, so I don't know if, like, if Shang-Chi did literally, like, kill this guy in his sleep or something, or the, the guy's sleep, not Shang-Chi's. Although, you know, honestly... I, th I think there's a certain chance that Shang-Chi could, in his sleep, literally in his sleep, kill someone. Anyway, I I'm not sure if, you know, if, if it was, like, an assassination or if, like, he challenged him to a duel or something, but... Holy crap, is Spider-Man going to kill someone that he doesn't have to kill in No Way Home? They do for Eternals, Doctor Strange 2, etc. So, yeah, that's... It's... it's It looks like they're really going to continue down this dark path, as it were. So I only just got around to watching Shang-Chi and, you know, I finished recording my video on it, and then I realized after, I don't think I commented at all on the fact that Bruce is no longer Professor Hulk. I don't really have anything to add to the theories that are already out there. I just wanted to acknowledge, obviously, it is a big deal, and it will be very interesting to see exactly what the answer is to why. Like, I heard someone, someone says, someone thought that he used the fact that he, like, the time travel machine, before they sent Scott through time, they sent time through Scott. So maybe they could use, maybe, you know, Banner used that to make his body go back to the, you know, the separate parts. And, you know, it is also worth noting, you know, his arm is still in a sling. You know, so... Yeah, you know, it's possible that you don't really heal from the damage done to your body by a um, gauntlet snap. And also another thing that I, I meant to say this, I, I didn't get around to noting it and then I forgot to mention it. I really loved almost all of All Hail the King. Why was there a homophobic joke? during the end credits, you know, the one involving Justin Hammer. Are we really not past homophobic jokes? I know it came out in 2014, not 2021. Still, really, it's, it, yeah. I, I know an argument could be, perhaps be made that it's not homophobic, but I would really argue that it is. Like, the, the, you know, we're supposed to think less of Justin. We're supposed to think he and his lover are ridiculous for, you know, now that, yeah, I, I'm just briefly going to say about my video on Shang-Chi, I, th in a, in a, 
instead of referring to the the as as far as I understand, it is you know Chinese. Chi that was a different. I put the emphasis on the wrong part of the word. Um, Chinese culture that the movie is, you know, the, the mythology and the, the customs and all of these things, as far as I understand, they are all Chinese. The reason that for so much of the, of my video on Shang-Chi, instead of saying Chinese, I say Asian. I, th I was basically, I was worried that I had it wrong, that it wasn't Chinese. But now I've watched like 10 different videos on Shang-Chi, and I don't remember a single one of them referring to any of it as anything other than Chinese. Like, it's not Japanese or Korean or any other, you know. I was basically, I was worried that I had it wrong, and that it would sound like I was, like, uh, you know, appealing to negative stereotypes about them or something. And I realized, only, only after I was done with the video, I realized it's actually a little worse if you think that, like, because now it kind of sounds like I don't, like, like I think that Chinese, like the words Chinese and Asian are basically synonymous, which I obviously realized they're not. I just didn't realize that that is how it might sound if I kept saying Asian instead of Chinese, but yeah. I said at the start of the video, I'm almost definitely going to say something that's going to sound disrespectful, and I really don't mean it to be. You know, so, yeah. Now, that is everything that I had to say about these two. So, yeah, I... I do not know how they're going to keep, like, you know, others have said that this episode was darker than the Doctor Strange one. Again, I'm not sure I agree, but that's another discussion. How are they going to go darker than Marvel zombies? Like, that's just, yeah. But really, really cool to see, you know, if you don't know the comics, you might not know the, the you know, the actual comics story. The, or the, yeah, the actual comics are Marvel Zombies. It, they're not a what-if story, but, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, it's not impossible, actually. I was going to say, I don't think that we're going to get, like, a Disney Plus miniseries that adapts, like, a huge chunk of that overall storyline. But then again, I guess it's possible that this was, like, a pilot episode for that. You know, so if they make it, I will be very, very, that, yeah, I'm not expecting them to do that. I'm not, like, I'm not going to be super disappointed if that doesn't happen. But back to what I was going to, you know, how are they going to go that much darker than this? Like, especially remaining within PT-13. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's definitely comic stories that are super, super dark, but some of the comics are not PG-13, you know, the, the, it's been a long time since I, I actually, I don't think I've ever read Hulk versus Wolverine, but I, I feel like I've seen panels where, let's see, do both of them draw blood? I, I, I don't remember 100%, but, you know, in the comics, there's blood a bunch of times when there's probably some comics where well it's possible hypothetically maybe comic books exist where Wolverine uses his claws and there is no blood but I've read a lot of lot of Wolverine comic book stories where there is blood and the stories are super dark like I've read a bunch of those that they would only be able to do if they did them as R-rated. And, I mean, that is the thing. We still, we don't really know what they're going to, if they're bringing in Deadpool, there's no way that it's going to be 100% PG-13. I, that, that would be ridiculous. At, at least if it's like a solo movie. I guess, hypothetically, if he just shows up in someone else's story, 
maybe he they're going to be able to get away with maybe someone keeps interrupting him every time he's about to swear someone yeah but you know are they really are they going to to do outright r rated stuff you know cuz with star disney plus does put out you know I, I don't know how much yeah yeah actually come to think of it there i think there are at least some originals to the but anyway you know they've like if you have if if you live in a country where disney plus has star i you know apparently that's not all countries which really sucks for them you know it has like con air it has all alien movies like the entire franchise, uh, Prometheus, is even on there. Which, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna get into that, because I guess that's technically a spoiler for that movie. Anyway, they recently put up all the Predator movies, you know, so, yeah. Which, actually, I'm glad that they did, because for the longest time, they had the Alien vs. Predator movies both of them but they didn't have any of the regular predator movies and it's like why would you have the alien versus predator movies but not the predator movie like is there a single person on the planet who thinks that the first alien versus predator movie is a better movie than the first predator movie anyway with Star, hypothetically, they could put out R-rated MCU stuff. You know, it kind of burying the lead here. They do have Marvel R-rated stuff. You know, the the Marvel licensed. I mean, the Fox. They have Logan and both Deadpool movies on there. So, hypothetically. You know, like, yeah, you know, if you have Disney Plus, but you don't have Star, or you don't have the password for Star, you know, go bug your parents for that. Don't go bug your parents for that. Do not watch. Do not watch Logan or Deadpool 1 or 2 if you're not, like, 18 or or just... Yeah, I am I was joking. I am I am not recommending anybody do that. The, the opinions and, and, you know, expressed on this show are, are not, yeah. Anyway, hypothetically, they could do MCU stuff that was R-rated and just only release it on Star. But, I mean, that I guess that would require them to put Star in, the, you know, on Disney Plus in the countries that don't currently have it. Because, like, oh boy, if, if you know... The MCU has made some mistakes along the way, but if they release a Deadpool movie, a new Deadpool movie, and there are entire countries that are unable to watch, like, holy crap. Yeah. Anyway. I I will be very... I, I, I'm really looking forward to see how are they going to go... If they're going to try to go darker than this, or at least just... Yeah, I, I, I'm really glad they're, they're doing such dark stories on, on this show, because that, you know, if, you, if you're going to do something like Marvel Zombies, it kind of has to be in its own continuity. It cannot be part of the MCU as surreal as it would be to see something like that. So, yeah. Let's see the... Thing. Yeah, yeah, that is everything that I have to say. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed as I very much enjoyed watching and recording.